In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up Shopify markets for your online store. With Shopify markets, you're going to be able to sell internationally and you're going to be able to localize the experience that your customers have depending on the country or region that they are visiting from. If you don't know me, my name is Zan. I'm the owner of the Indie Collab. We're an agency that specializes in Shopify and conversion rate optimization. So let's dive in and take a look at how you can get this set up. So you're going to need to go into your settings in the bottom left hand corner and go to markets on the left hand menu here. In here you're going to see a list of any countries that you already have set up as markets within Shopify. If you don't have any that's fine as well. Any countries that aren't covered under these specific countries like US, Mexico, New Zealand are going to be under the international market. But let's say you really want to start selling specifically to customers in Australia. You want to localize the experience that they're having so they're not seeing USD which is our default under international because that's our core currency for our website. You want them to see Australian dollars. What we're going to do is we're going to say add market and we're going to give it a name. So in this example, it's going to be Australia. Add countries or regions and search for Australia here. Tick this one. You can see that it's currently in my international market. We're going to hit done and create it as its own. Now you've got this market set up, you can begin to start personalizing the experience that your customers are going to see when they're visiting from Australia. So our language is going to be in English and that's how we want it to stay. You can install um, translate and adapt as well. That's going to allow you to update the types of language that they're seeing. So where you say hello, for example, in the United States, you might want to update it to g'day for your Australian customers. It's completely up to you what you want to do with that. For now, I'm just going to leave it as English and we're going to set our product pricing. So you can see here that it says that we're selling in Australian dollars, which is perfect. That's what we want to be doing for Australia. And then you have a couple of options for how you can set your pricing. You can either use the exchange rate, so you can let the Shopify dynamic pricing updated do it for you. It's going to look at what is the current currency exchange rate and convert that against your base currency, which in this case is US dollars. You can manually set a conversion rate so you can say that you always want one US dollar to equal a dollar fifty Aussie or you can set a price increase or decrease so you can say I want my prices to be increased by five percent always in Australia or the option that I would select suggest you go with is selecting the price manually. Now this feature wasn't always available to all plans so if you haven't gone in and had a look and you're a Shopify basic customer using Shopify markets, you can now set specific prices for your products in your markets dashboard. So let's say I've done my research and I know that my competitors are selling a similar snowboard to this one for $2,500 and I want to make sure that I'm being competitive. I can actually go and set this price at whatever I want it to be. So let's say in Australia, I want to sell this for $2,499 Australian dollars to make sure that I'm competitive and of course check that that's going to be profitable for you as well. And let's say this hydrogen board um, 925 is a bit of a strange number so uh, I want to round it down to 899 um, to see how that goes with the Australian customers and then I'm going to save that. Now that is going to update my prices in Australia only and remember that is Australian dollars not US dollars or whatever your base currency is so make sure that you're looking at your prices in the correct currency to make sure again that you're staying profitable and also competitive based on what your competitors are doing in that local market. Let's jump back into markets now and see in our Australian market, we've got our language set up, we've got our pricing set. The next thing you want to take a look at is the duties and import taxes. So depending on where you are shipping products, they're going to have a different duty threshold. That means that if it's over that threshold, your customers may have to pay a tax in order to receive their order. And this is going to vary country to country, so you need to do some research here and see what 
what that threshold is and then make your customers aware that they may have to pay this on top of the price of your products and how it's going to be charged. Depending on who you're shipping your products with, you may have the option to have duty paid delivery. You're going to need to check this depending on if you're using DHL, FedEx, USPS, doesn't matter what it is, go and ask them if you can do DDP and then come into this duties and import taxes section and you can either select yes my carrier does support it or no they don't. If you're not sure or they don't that means you're not going to be able to collect duties or import taxes at checkout and that means that if there is duty or import taxes due the customer will need to pay that in country when their order arrives and the delivery company will not deliver it to them until they've paid that. Obviously that can be a really terrible customer experience if they're not aware that that's going to happen. So you need to let them know in confirmation emails and also at checkout as well. Add a little note to let them know that there may be duties or import taxes applicable and that they are responsible for those. Another thing that can happen and I've seen this happen with clients in the past is that when customers aren't aware of this additional charge that may be due, they cancel their order and they issue a charge back and then you're out of pocket because the PayPal or Stripe, whoever it is, has sided with the customer on this one. Uh, they've refunded them back the money, they've taken the money from you, and then the product is sitting in country waiting to be claimed and have the duty and import tax paid, or you need to pay to have it returned back to you, which is an additional shipping cost. So it's really important that you do your homework on this, check out what are the duty and import taxes in the market that you're setting up, and then again, either make sure you've got your setting set up with your carrier for duty paid delivery or make your customers aware have them tick a little tick box to uh, agree to pay those fees when it uh, lands in their country. So that's your duties and import taxes. You also need to set up your shipping rates. So this is going to be done in the standard shipping and delivery area, but you can go manage and shipping from Shopify markets and it's going to take you exactly where you need to go. You can see in this example, I've got my domestic rate set up for my store in the US, and then I have got international shipping set up, and this includes Australia currently, but I want to add a new zone. So I'm going to say um, create zone, and this one is going to be Australia. But you can see it's actually grayed out at the moment. I can't create this zone because it's currently included in international. So all you need to do if this happens to you is close out, click on the three little dots next to the zone that it's included in, in this example, international, edit zone, untick Australia, click done. And now I can go and create that zone without an issue. You give it a name, in this case, Australia, tick Australia and done. And now you can add your rates. So I might have a standard rate or I might have free shipping over a certain threshold and I might have um, express, let's just say it's $10 flat rate um, for Australia and that is in Australian dollars which is $8.58 US. So now we're going to save that, we've got our shipping rate set up, we've got our duties and taxes taken care of and we've got our pricing sorted as well. The last thing that you need to do and this one you may want to consult an accountant or make sure that you've done your research is do you need to charge taxes in this market that you're shipping to and set up your tax rates. So I'm currently collecting taxes in Australia. If you don't need to, then you can come into your taxes and duty settings and you can update this. Um, you can see here that I have the option to remove it or I can edit my GST information and add an ABN or an Australian business number here to make sure that I'm staying compliant. Again, either consult a tax professional or do a lot of research to make sure that you're staying um, compliant with your tax obligations in the new markets that you are getting set up and in your primary market as well. 
Another consideration when you're selling internationally is what payment options are available in that country that your customers are used to using. So most people are used to using PayPal, credit card processes, things like that, but in some countries they'll have their own payment methods that customers are used to using. You wanna make sure if you're really taking that market seriously that you have those options available in your store to them as well so that it feels familiar, feels local to them, and and they're more likely to convert because they can use what they're used to. So you're just gonna go in and add those payment methods once you know what they are in your payment settings. The last thing we want to do with our market is we want to go and take a look. We want to check it. So let's go and preview our online store. Make sure that our pricing has taken effect and everything is looking how we want it to. So let's have a look for that hydrogen board that we priced at $8.99 in Australia. So I'm just going to search for the product here. And here we have it, it's this one here. You can see it's 899 AUD. If you don't have the currency code on your prices, make sure you go in and add it. That's gonna live in your theme settings. So you're gonna go to online store, go to your theme and then click the customize button. And it's usually gonna be in theme settings. It's gonna depend on the theme that you're using, um, but go and have a look for it there first. If you don't find it, then have a look at the documentation for your theme or reach out to the theme developers or Shopify if it's one of the Shopify free themes that are available. So let's just give this a second to load. So once you click on the customize button here, you want to go into your theme settings and in here you should have something called currency codes or currency format. If you don't have this then go and check with the uh, the developers. You want to make sure you've got this turned on. You see if I untick this it's going to remove the country code from the price. Anytime there's confusion around what currency it is in you're potentially losing that sale so it's important to have that turned on. We don't want it like this where it just says 749.95. We want to turn that on so it tells them exactly what it is that they are paying in. So I'm going to leave that turned on and click save. The other thing you can do once you're in your theme customizer and you've got the market set up is personalize the content that they see. So let's go onto the home page and let's imagine that we are running a Thanksgiving sale and it is valid and applicable for our US customers only. Um, our other markets don't celebrate Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna select United States from this drop down here where it currently says default. And now I am gonna to go to my sections and you're gonna see that it now says add section to United States. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna add a image banner for my sale. You can choose any of the sections to add in and personalize. Let's select a nice little Thanksgiving image here to promote the sale. Then you could of course go in and update the text and the buttons that are going to appear for your sale banner. Let's just drag it up the top. You can see that this has got like a little green diamondy thing on it. This is just telling us that um, let's turn that off that this is for this market. So now I'm going to save this and I am gonna take a look at my store as if I was in the US. So in the preview mode of my store, if I select from the drop down in this bottom left hand corner, United States, we are gonna to go to our home page. And you can see that I've got this Thanksgiving banner here my prices are in USD, but everything else is the same because I haven't customized it any further. Now, if I go and I switch back to my new market of Australia, give that a second to refresh, you'll see that I have my original banner there. There's no sign of that Thanksgiving banner because it's not relevant to those customers in Australia. You'll also see that these prices here are in 
AUD and they're using the prices that we specifically set for our Australia market. So you can go crazy with the personalization and localization that you can do with your content now. This is a new feature that was just released as part of the Shopify Summer Edition 2023 release um, and it's going to be a game changer for customers that are selling internationally. Again, the more you can personalize and customize, localize the experience that your customers are having, the higher your conversion rate is going to be. So the last thing you want to do is make sure that you have got the geolocation app turned on. This is going to geolocate your customers so it's going to detect which country they're in and direct them to the correct experience for them. So this is a free app. It's called geolocation. It's got a little globe icon like this and what it's going to do is let's say um, I want to view from Australia. It's going to say your location is set to Australia. Shop in AUD. Get shipping options for Aussie and then my customers can either continue or change the country or region if they want to as well. You can customize this pop-up a little bit so you could change the background to white, you can change the text to black, change the button color so it matches your branding and then the last little thing that you can do in here is you can turn on or off the little selector that uh, shows down the bottom here so this one here you can move it to the left the right or the center so pretty limited with that one but I would have it turned on if I was you give your customers the option if they automatically close that pop-up uh, just out of habit they've still got a little selector where they can change how they're viewing as well I hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions pop them below and we'll do our best to help you